Mm. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I was busy reading this giant book about New York because I'm so cultured. Anyways, today I'm going to teach you a little bit of New York history, specifically the story of Henry Hudson and the accidental discovery of New York. Now you're probably thinking, oh, Tom, wait a minute. I didn't become one of your millions of subscribers to listen to you tell me history. I want to take a tour of New York. All right, look, chill out, okay, because I'm stuck in a quarantine, if you can't tell by this sick beard, and this is all we can do. And besides, next time you're walking up the Hudson River, you're on a date, you're going to tell your date this incredible true story, and she or he is going to be very impressed with you, and you're going to remember this face. So just listen. So we start the story in the early 1600s. Now, some of you may be thinking, wait a minute, Tom. <laughs> I know that Giovanni de Verrazzano actually discovered uh, New York Harbor in 1524. Technically, that's true, but he actually didn't take detailed notes and explore the area the way Hudson did, and the situation politically in Europe was very different. And don't ever interrupt me in your mind again. You also may be thinking, well, there were also uh, Native Americans already living there, so how could anyone have discovered it? Well, look, I didn't make the history of this. You know, it's not PC, but whatever, what can you do? So we're introduced to Henry Hudson, who by the early 1600s was in his late 30s, most likely. They don't actually have a birthday for him, so it's kind of a guess. Uh, and I know you're thinking, he's a gross 30s. <laughs> I, uh, I never want to leave my 20s, I know that. I mean, being in your 30s is like totes extra, right? <laughs> Henry Hudson had the lifelong dream of being the first explorer to find an alternate route to India. Uh, he attempted it once in 1607 for the Muscovy Company, going through the north, the Arctic Circle, and failed. The second attempt was in 1608, and it was going through the northeast, north of Russia, around Novaya Zemlya. He returned from that after having failed as well, and he was fired by the Muscovy Company. The Dutch East India Company, however, scooped him up shortly after to pick up where he left off. In fact, in the previous years, a man named Willem Barentz, he was Dutch, he actually attempted that Northeast Passage three times before freezing to death on his last attempt. Back in that time, being an explorer was considered like being a daredevil. You would leave harbor and people would be like, bye, good luck, bon voyage, uh, nice knowing you. You're probably gonna die uh, because people died a lot. So the Dutch East India Company sends him away in 1609 to find uh, that Northeast route on the half moon, which translates to half moon. It was an 85 foot ship. So he goes north and he encounters some bad conditions. So he says, you know what, screw this, I'm going west. So he goes west because there is where the two routes that he had not attempted were located. One would have been through the northwest, through Canada, through what is today the Northwest Passage and what is today Hudson Bay. The other route was through the southwest, which is through what is today the United States of America. He chose to go the Southwest way because he had a friend in Virginia named John Smith. The Pocahontas John Smith. They had been corresponding and John Smith had actually founded a settlement in 1607 there. And he told Hudson that he believed the route lied somewhere around there. So Hudson heads all the way down to around the Chesapeake Bay area and heads north, kind of popping in here and there to try to find that passageway. And it is this way that he stumbles on New York Harbor. He talks about it as in lush Greenland with hills and tons and tons of animals like bears and beavers. He actually encounters Native Americans as well, who he said were very friendly. He heads up what is today the Hudson River eventually to try to find that passage, gets all the way to Albany before realizing crud. This is not it. So he turns back around, encounters a couple issues. In fact, one of his crew members took an arrow through the neck. <laughs> you know. It's said that the archer actually yelled out, welcome to New York. So Hudson heads back to Europe. The Dutch East India Company is not happy that he didn't find a route to India and that he disobeyed, but they were happy that he found all of these furs because that is what the Native Americans were trading in. Beaver pelts, otters, foxes, everything, man. It was crazy. It was also a shift in thinking. The Dutch saw an opportunity to gain influence in trade by getting these materials. So they'd start to send expeditions to the island of Manhattan that Hudson spoke of. Manhattan means island of many hills in the Native American language. That's a good fact right there. 
and they eventually settle and then they incorporate New Amsterdam in 1625, which was the capital of the New Netherlands, which was the Dutch settlement in the New World. Back then, there was nothing like that New World smell. <laughs> what happened to Henry Hudson though, right? Well, in 1610, he had not let go of his dream to find a route to India, and he embarked on his final voyage through the Northwest. He enters in what is today the Hudson Bay, named after him. Eventually, however, they encounter bad conditions and the crew mutinies against him. They put him on a little dinghy outside the main ship with some people loyal to him, some of the sick, and his son, and they send him off into the elements without any provisions. That's one moment that you know his son was probably thinking, Dad, you're embarrassing me. So that is how Henry Hudson met his end, never knowing how famous he would become. I mean, the Hudson River is named after him, as is Hudson Bay, as is Brianna Hudson, who's this girl I went to high school with. And all of that happened because Henry Hudson decided to disobey orders. That's a great story and true. Well, if you enjoyed it, please uh, subscribe and uh, follow me on Instagram. You know, those things are very important these days, especially when you're stuck in your apartment and aren't able to leave and see people and go outside. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm just going to sit here and read this book about New York. <clears throat> this also is where I got a lot of the information. Great book. All right. See you.